Hi, my name is Greg Martin, and this pitch is a trilogy uh, about Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu, Rise of Cthulhu, Return of Cthulhu. Um, if that's copyright issues, you could use the title The Old God, Part 1, 2, 3. Uh, Lovecraft's legendary monster Cthulhu comes to life in a truly original modern interpretation of the unspeakable abomination from the depths of the seas. Our protagonist discovers that the mitochondria in almost all living cells may house a terrible secret, an ancient secret that is at the root of an unimaginable horror unfolding before the world's eyes. The synopsis is a movie opens to dark ominous music. Asteroid rolls past the camera while you see a shot of Earth from space. Scene reopens over the ocean. The asteroid slams into the ocean with apparently nothing around to notice. Around close to today's date. Scene opens on our protagonist hero. He's a scientific genius finishing up his graduate work on cell biology studying mitochondria. Some jokes about mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell to which our hero responds, oh, how really hilarious, I love that joke. I've actually never heard it or something, you know. Character development of our young scientist continues as a personable guy with scientific talent that's always been fascinated with mitochondria. And he graduates and goes off to work for a big government lab, Cold Springs Harbor or something. Five years later, scene opens to a bear on the coast of Alaska, tearing through a fresh salmon. The bear stops, looks out at the sea, walks over to the beach, looks out, walks in the water, swims out, continues swimming out, starts grunting from exhaustion, struggling, breathing heavily. Suddenly a giant shark or squid <clears throat> devours the bear in a violent scene. Wow. Ominous music. Our scientist hero is now older, working in his government job. He's pulled into a secretive project where the team is asked to research various sea life samples from another branch of the government. The project is guarded and well-funded. He finds that the mitochondria in these samples are 10 times the normal amount in tissue and 150 times the normal levels in neurons. By all standards, it makes no sense. Meanwhile, strange events start to befall the planet. Creatures are wandering into the ocean and swimming away, and now people are behaving distracted and becoming obsessed with the ocean and suddenly disappearing without a trace. There's TikTok social media movement around seafood that starts to form with anti-seafood conspiracy nuts talking about the old God. He's always within us. He's always been here. You're always his or whatever. And then pro-seafood, protect our rights to seafood types. And the, the former is more science crowd that's saying, hey, there's some evidence here about what's going on with this seafood. You know, what's going on? Panic. Um, and that kind of ties into the recent COVID stuff going on. So opinions flare across the nation as these events and strange disappearances intensify while Congress is now forced to act. And our hero presents his findings only to have Congress shut him down. And half of Congress relocates their offices to coastal locations. And people are finding loved ones submerged in bathtubs for hours in a trance-like state. And then they disappear. Finally, our hero discovers that there's a protein in the mitochondria that's different. The mitochondria themselves are genetically different and by protein profile. The protein in question denatures in boiling water, like any protein, but then renatures in a different conformation, only to repeat when boiled again. When the mutant protein is exposed to normal mitochondria, they become mutant, they multiply, and they relocate to nerve cells and nerve tissue. The organism becomes fast, strong, mentally hyperactive, and seeks out large bodies of water. President of the USA, uh, finally, uh, President of the USA must be reached because our hero, as he navigates various conspiracies and corrupt actors, seemingly driven to stop his research and stop this anti-seafood movement, the president is told that Congress is compromised. The phenomenon is caused by eating some form of contaminated meat that contains mutant mitochondria. They grow within the organism to a critical mass and form an intelligence that directs the host to water. Somehow they can communicate with each other. It seems the mutant mitochondria want to associate together and in water. The president acknowledges the emergency and grants emergency powers to this research team and the anti-seafood forces. The spread across the nation is halted and the cases stop rising as fast, but it's still happening. People are panicked. Over the rise of Cthulhu, we see the hero discover that there's a genetic change initiated by the mutated protein that can be reversed by a serum that returns the mitochondria to normal. There's still the mystery of what is at the bottom of the ocean. 
Rise of Cthulhu follows a hero discovering the legend and reality of what they are facing. What is this? Why is the symbol of Jesus a fish? Why is a baptism a cleaning of sin and rebirth of the body underwater? Why is the story of the civilization of it conquering Atlantis from the bottling, bottom of the ocean? Or Leviathan sea monsters devouring ships? The organism is a collective intelligence that dominates all life on a planet and simply exists until a world-ending cataclysm that would produce immense heat boiling the oceans, killing the monster on that planet. However, cells survive, containing the mitochondria that have now been boiled and in dormant form. A meteor containing this remnant hits a planet like Earth and seeds whatever life was there with eukaryotic mitochondria that are driven to evolve with new energy source in a dormant form. That's where we came from. Then another meteor containing mutant protein impacts, activating the planet host life to be taken over by the Cthulhu. Only this time, humans have discovered it while it is becoming on Earth. The only way to kill the beast is to boil the oceans and nuke the planet. Humanity must unite and construct escape ships while the monster, being intelligent, catches on and begins to rise from the oceans, controlling all sea life by its communications through water and causing tidal force waves and destruction. Panic. The beast makes it out of the water. If the beast makes it out of the water onto the land, it may never be killed. The movie ends to ships escaping Earth after an emergency launch and the monster rising visible from space writhing and terrible, nukes going off, boiling the Earth's oceans. Credits rolls, the ships sail away to set up colonies on the Mars and Moon, setting up for a third part of the trilogy, Rise or Return of Cthulhu, where the larger unified intelligence from the depths of space is encountered again by the surviving humanity, long in the future, now aware of it, on a larger cosmic scale, and the battle for survival happens over alien worlds through all of space.